सुशांत सिंह राजपूत बट नाउ अपेंटली शी इज इन दूस बिकॉज शी इज गेटिंग सम न्यू वर्क वट इज दैट वर्क आई वुड लाइक टू नो टू बट यू नो बट वी ऑल्सो नो दैट शी इज वर्किंग एंड आई डिट सी गुड फॉर हर मैम ऑनेस्टली गुड फॉर हर एंड आई फील दैट इट दैट्स द वन थिंग दैट विल प्रॉब्ली हेल्प हर टू गेट ओवर ऑल द स्कार्स दैट शी वेंट थ्रू यस यस लेट्स होप दैट्स व्हाट हैपेंस बट गेस व्हाट इज हैपनिंग एज फार एज जॉन एब्राहिम इज कंसर्न्ड व्हाट वेट वेट काम डाउन Force Two was released like post demonetization, so it did not do very well, and all of that happened. So Correct. now what John Abraham has gone ahead and done is that he's bought the rights from Vipul Shah, and he's wanting to make wait for it, Force Three. Oh my God, Force Three? Yes. Be with you. The force. Be with you. Be with you. The force. Oh sorry. But do you really feel that? I have to say it again. Be with you. The force. Then it's Force Three. Correct. <laughs> Takes a whole new meaning in this case. Oh, you. You guys. think we'll we'll see three John Abrams again? Again? No, 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 no. Just three parts is enough, and it'll be you know, you know it'll be quite forceful. Tell this your whole... face that when you're saying. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. You know, it'll be very, very forceful. This right. whole uh, thing because it is after all force three. Yeah. It's fine acting, so she really liked it that you kept your smile to yourself. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And looking down now. Yeah, so I. <laughs> you know, Amir Khan. Yeah. Seems to have moved his uh, release of Lal Singh Chadda. Oh no, Lal Singh Chadda is back in the conversation again, as far as you and I are concerned. Yeah. So He's... August 11th now. Apparently, okay. uh, because uh, lots of stuff is happening anyway. And the, the, how many the, times have we talked about Lal Singh Chadda? Lal Singh Chadda is a movie that we can talk about a hell of a lot because <laughs> yeah. it is one of those mega big, mega big you know, ones, yeah. uh, and it's Amir Khan's film, so naturally, yeah. you Fair know. Um, but yeah, so it has been uh, uh, pushed now to August eleventh, uh, which means it is going to clash with Akshay Kumar's Raksha Bandhan. But it doesn't matter to Akshay Kumar because he's constantly like. Uh, yeah, whether it's Raksha Bandhan, yeah, whether it's Diwali, exactly. whether it's uh, Baisakhi, whether it's uh, Eid, whatever it is. Exactly. Akshay Kumar seems to have a release, right? Father's Day, so many others. Anyways, yes. but uh, of course, talking about Kangana Ranaut, uh, hmm. who is uh, well, of course, her Twitter was banned, and we all know that, and all of that had happened. But now she has come out in support of Deepika Padukone, saying that. No. Oh, she said that Deepika oh, Padukone can support herself. She gets support. Ha! Huh? I mean, that's what. She, at least when Kangana ends up saying something like that, it is support, Suchi, okay? because usually it's a barb when she says anything for anybody. Correct. So I kind of interpreted it as the fact that she's left Deepika alone, and she said that she's a big girl, she can handle the criticism or whatever. After the bold scenes that she did in Gehraiya. In Gehraiya, but curious to Deepika, you know, for you know. Yeah, for but I found the film to be a very very interesting uh, plot. I really enjoyed the film to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so did, you know, so many people have, and uh, yeah, more power to the big man. Absolutely, man, she deserves it. So see, we have somebody who is extremely exciting, who's a musician. Don't tell lies. Who's a, yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> to keep a straight face when I'm saying it. Ah, but no, that genuinely, and she's somebody who's also very close to you. She's a good friend of yours and all of that. Yes. And uh, we're going to be talking to her, and she comes from a powerhouse as far as her DNA is concerned. Oh, most definitely. Uh, this is somebody who's, I mean, absolutely beautiful inside and out. So so talented, and. A wonderful human being. We are very excited to welcome Shruti Hassan. Here, right here, with Sudhi and Suchi. Hello, hello, and welcome to 
श्रुति And here we are with Shruti Hasan. The talented, the brilliant. Hi, hi there, day, day. Anna Vishnu, how are you? Na na, all right, madam. You guys are looking at. Oh, first class, first class. Well, same to you too as well. <laughs> but I, I didn't understand any of that, but that's fine. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> we were saying bad that's things okay. about you, Shruti. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I'm used to it. Okay, so okay, kicking things off, Shruti. Uh, thank you so much one for being here and it's fabulous and more importantly want to talk to you about your musical journey apart from obviously the a lot of other brilliant stuff that you've done but it seems that that kind of uh, uh, centers you in a big way as as a human being i mean that inspires you that gets you going and all of that right so when did it all kind of kick off for you i think when i was very very young the first time i ever performed on stage i was 6 years old for a show for my dad and i was singing this old tamil song of his which is like really not rock starry but a very nostalgic song right nice. but i remember seeing those people in the audience and like having a connection and feeling that applause for me and yeah. i just felt like wow the, i you know even as a child i understood that it was like a special moment yeah and i think i just chased that feeling my entire life actually in different forms but to me the association is through music always in my head you know right. and after that of course as you grow up and you get more angsty because of life and all of that then yeah. you know it was it was like a cyclic version of going inside and bringing it back out which felt so cathartic which i mean suchil no you don't get that same feeling with acting simply Absolutely. because there's so many people it's more of a collaborative process sure. unless you're acting by yourself for yourself which i'm sure we know some of those people <laughs> yeah <it's laughs> <right. laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. music feels intimate and solitary as well as very giving and you know it's a benevolent art form so it's just it's always fascinated me that's pretty much it. you know sudhi i don't know if you've heard some of shruti stuff but i so she have, brought, yeah. she has she has brought tears to my eyes yeah. uh, on some pieces that she just sits there on the piano and she just plays you know and it's just absolutely fantastic now where does your inspiration come from shruti i mean is it from all sorts of things or are you more romantic or are you more uh, tell us where your inspiration comes from I think just I mean it sounds cliche but from within me and I've tried to write about things outside of me from you know another point of view and that rarely happens and it yes. feels a bit dishonest because as a person I'm like I actually can't speak for everyone so I like to speak from my own self it used to be like more angsty and like mm, hurt and all before <laughs> and now it's it's definitely a little more introspective in terms of what it means to be a woman what it feels like to be lost in translation emotionally so it's quite from the inner layers of me which i don't talk about or yeah. share all the time yeah. yeah but but it's interesting what you just talked about so do you feel that uh the human is constantly evolving as in should be the human or the musician is constantly evolving or is it very difficult for you to kind of separate the two or even if you want to you don't want to No, it's very reflective into the music. So as the evolution happens or stop, I can stop. So I can almost see it translate almost immediately. Mm -hmm. But once in a while, I can feel this force of the music picking me up, which is why I say art has been so cathartic to me. It's my, the biggest blessing that I can sit at the piano and sort out stuff where life doesn't give me momentum. The music does. So it's like chicken and egg sometimes. But yeah. mostly, I'd say you know it's the person that influences the music. Now, where would you say your this? Uh, you know, as far as your gene pool is concerned, where would you say the music has come from? Is it mom or dad? I think the audience side of me, like having good taste, comes from mom. Not that my dad has bad taste, bless him. But you know, like the she's like a super connoisseur of music. She's like you know brought me up on like Dylan and Marley and Tori Amos. She introduced wow. me to the Prodigy, and I was like, mom, you're really cool. You know, so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but my dad is the musician and singer and he has an amazing sense of music and he's an incredible singer 
So I think and I get that. Too. And dancer. And dancer. Wow. And, and actor. And jam. that has not come to me. That gene has not come to me <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, instruments, right, Shruti? I mean, you play how many? First, I would like to kind of understand that. So I play the piano, and I did basic training in song, like in music school, because you know to write music. Oh. But I never actually trained, trained with a piano teacher. And I trained in tabla, but I don't play the tabla really. I did Hindustani classical, and I had to learn the tabla. So it's just basically two instruments. Not tell me this. Tell me this. When you when you actually are writing your music and you're composing it and you're doing all of that. uh you play one instrument which is of course two maybe uh but when you compose your stuff uh how 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 is that process for you because if you're maybe not playing the other instruments or whatever is the case yeah. how do you get the sensibilities right or the nuances right well uh you're a musician so you'll understand sometimes mm. it's just me jamming at the piano and that leads the way and it gives birth to an idea Sure. So because I'm a poet first I write everything out first sometimes I think this would make a beautiful song and yeah. then of course you have to like rip that thing apart and right. deconstruct it and make it make sense but usually I go at it with the piano first and like let it channel my emotion I don't think of the production ever really when yeah. I'm writing I only think of making the song old school sit at the piano make a verse nice. make a chorus nice. make it make sense Then I work with different producers. The one producer I've been working a lot. Actually, two of them is two Karans. One is Karan Kanchan. One is Karan Parikh. So I have these two Karans who also know me as a person, and they know what sounds I create on my charts. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's very collaborative. After I've written it, I really love the collaboration, and I think it's like you know a, a family where you have to trust them to bring that to you that you need. You know, with, with the two Karans, I'm pretty sure the music is going to be fairly current. अवतार Yeah, basically not this at all. You know, when yeah. you uh, when you deal with the kind of roles that you're given, uh, Shruti, what is your process? Uh, you know, uh, is there a is there a major process like a method actor does, or are you one of those switch on switch off actresses? I mean, you've seen me on set. I'm really a switch on switch off. I'm like, where is she? John. I'm like, ah, 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 switch on. So there's like no, there's no yeah. transitioning yeah. at all. Let's do that again, yeah, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike music, I never had any formal training. Hmm. I. you know got into the movies just as a lark to be honest and i thought let's see and i'll make more money than i'll ever make as a musician and that was the mindset but the thing is i didn't expect to fall in love with it the way i did yeah. and then i sucked at it pretty bad so then i had to like figure my way out like in front of everybody you know it's yeah. like studying for your board exams in front of critics <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a challenge but the process for me has been the same way i approach my music is to because every song isn't um you know play, i'm i'm playing another part of shruti and that's how i approached it like yeah. mm-hmm. how do i stay true to the emotion and like let me connect with it first and the the stories i've not connected with i've not played those parts you know um yeah. so even if it's a out and out commercial telugu film i'm like what do i like about her and i feel like with a character I've given guardianship. A lot of actors say I I find myself in the role, but I've never actually found myself in roles. Mm-hmm. So I take it as a responsibility, and like maybe my interest in psychology makes me want to take guardianship and adopt this character and be truly spiritually and emotionally responsible for it. So that's really my kind of mental prep for it. For that's a very interesting. Kind of yeah, that's a very interesting way to approach a character and and execute it and all of that. There was a time in the middle. uh for about 3 years where where you were not acting or you were you would not done a lot of there was probably a little 2 years, yeah. Two years. Yeah. so what was it because of music or was it because of the fact that you wanted to kind of just internalize and just generally chill or what was it like i it mean it was just me you know i had hit a wall to put it very simply and i think we all kind of have those moments and then i was in a situation where i i knew the wall is coming close the wall is coming close but there was no way for me to get off the treadmill mm-hmm. and then you know there's that 
that straw that breaks the camel's back or whatever that happened to me personally where I wasn't making the music I wanted or making music at all. Yeah. I wasn't surrounding myself with the energies that I needed to grow as a human being. Yeah. I wasn't playing the kind of roles I wanted. I wasn't living a healthy lifestyle. Hmm. So one day it just stopped. And you know, it's not some big decision ki, aaj I will stop. Like it just stopped. <laughs> You did know? you when you did yeah. that? Did you levitate? When yeah. you yeah. when you exactly. did that? Did you levitate? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I did. Okay. I, you know, I was at the bottom of the ocean, and I was like, okay, there's only one way to the top. You know, so it was the opposite of this. But um, I'm really glad I did it, and a lot of and then I decided to say no. It's not a three month break or something. Like yeah. I'm taking a break, hmm. and I told my managers like. I'll see you when I do. Like I don't know when, you know. Yeah. I may do anything. So bye, you know, because that was the only way to like get the system off my back, yeah. so to speak. And that's when I started writing it again. And I went to London and I started working with musicians and producers there. And I needed that. I needed to go to a place where they didn't know what Hassan meant. They didn't care. Mm -hmm. Like Bollywood's just so colorful. Oh, good for you, you know. And then it was done. <laughs> and then start yeah. from scratch. It was the most amazing experience, and it actually gave me a rekindled passion for acting as well, which I really didn't have anymore because I was just kind of in the rut. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but Shruti, it's amazing. Actually, it would be nice for you to kind of maybe talk a little bit if you worked on your mental uh, yes. mindscape or whatever, because yes. for a lot of people, including myself and Suchi, I mean, it's so important to understand that from a yeah. human story yeah. that, that it, it can maybe help so many people because a lot of us go through that hitting the wall situation like you were talking about. Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, I just wish that I had seeked help like for my mental health earlier mm -hmm. because um, I, I've always suffered from anxiety. I've been a psychology student myself, but you know, you act like this is not in our house. Exactly. Yeah. Right. That with everything in our lives. So I always felt I'm not as adequate as dealing with life and things as other people. But I never sat to think, what is this? What is triggering all of this? So I wish I had, um, you know, known that before I hit the wall, before, you know, but I'm also dramatic. So of course I had to hit the wall. And <laughs> but I wish I'd taken the help before. I wish I'd met my therapist before. I wish I'd been honest with myself before. Hmm. And the, uh, yeah, just that, the biggest thing I've learned in all of this is, you know, we have preordained lessons, whether you're religious or not, you know, and sure. the more you avoid them, the more they'll come and really kick you. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, so yeah. I wish I was willing to learn those lessons as well in a more open hearted and open minded way. Yeah. So at that time, I was also is the time at which I started my journey to sobriety and my journey into therapy as well. Right. And and so it was all happening at the same time, really. Is it during the same time? I mean, you know, you're one of those rare actresses who is very open as far as your relationship, uh, uh, you know, is concerned, your personal relationship. And I think that's beautiful. And I think, and I'm, I've met uh, Shantanu and think you're absolutely phenomenal together. Oh, thank how much, you. How, how much uh, phenomenal, really, really nice. talented guy, my nice. God, seriously. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, has that, I mean, you know, being with him, how much of that has uh, reflected in, you know, the process of you finding Shruti again? Suchi, I think you'll agree with me as a as an independent financially stable yeah. that, you know, um, I'm very glad I met him post-healing. Yes. I'm actually glad he wasn't part of that process. Hmm. First of all, he got like the new, he got like the 2.0 version. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad because I have more to offer this relationship Correct. than I would have ever had three, four, five years ago. Yeah. And um, so I'm really glad about that. You know, I'm really, really glad about that. That now the growth comes from a place of where both of us have already worked on ourselves. Yes. You know, because yes. it's hard to help each other up sometimes together. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, but it's very obvious the two of you really complement each other, whether it's in the, you know, the stuff that we've seen, uh, you know, which is put out there on social media, etc. You yeah. really do, you know, and he really gets you. You can see that, you know. Yes, so thank God. I thought it's never going to happen in yeah. this life. I was like, <laughs> Okay, Jesus, it's fine. I will meditate there on my own. And also, <laughs> when this happened, I was like, what? How? Yeah. It's possible. It's possible. Okay, yeah. now you've worked in the South and you've worked in Bollywood as well. Um, what are the differences you felt uh, as far as the roles being offered to you is concerned? Have you have you had more, um, uh, have they seen more of, you know, what you're capable of in the South as and opposed I'll, to Bollywood? And I'll add to that because I, I loved what you did in Treadstone. So oh, thank you. Yeah, and and I think uh, it would be nice for you to maybe 
correlate the three different industries that you've yeah. had the you know opportunity, oh, opportunity to, work to work with i feel that you know i debuted in hindi and uh, the thing i was all and i never even knew telugu i never spoke telugu tamil was like a given right that i would sure. yeah. definitely do a tamil film it was actually telugu that changed my entire career trajectory and my approach to profession and all of us as human beings and especially as artists yearn for acceptance mm. for who we are you know and i think that happened with telugu for me so i don't find a difference really but i did find that i can't say i do overall feel the roles i've been offered in the south have been better yes mm. but i also have roles like a d day which i would never have been offered in the south or maybe you know no one would have thought to put me in that in that slot or even best seller for example yes. you mm. know so i can't really say but i i'd say overarchingly the challenge i faced was when i started out in hindi and then i started going back home really as i call sure. it even though i live in mumbai my roots they'd be like lekin aap itna focus wahan pe karoge to hindi pe aapko itna mauka nahi milega you have to sit here and wait and i was like no yeah, no I'm, i find that very strange because i mean this is the question i have for you on on this is you're an actor for god's sakes right if you fit the part you can if you can play it well enough then why not i mean because i mean, think because in any business whether it's like podcasting or making music or working at a bank you know everyone has these ideas of this is the epicenter so stay here like yeah. if you move to america you want to be you know a musician go to la go to new york but i'm like you know there's a whole scene in austin why wouldn't you go sure. there do you know sure. what i mean like oh, yeah. sure. go yeah. where your art takes you and where you feel loved and accepted you Fair know enough. yeah and i started getting a lot of that push back and then i just kind of gave up i was like you want me call me i'll be here i'm going yeah. where the roles are you Fair know enough. that's yeah. it yeah. yeah now as a musician what is that one moment that you've experienced either in a show of your own or by meeting one of your idols etc what's that one moment that you'll never forget as far as your musical career I think for me it started out like you know with with singing to so many people and having that moment right at the get go you know and then um, the other moment I had is I'm a huge fan of Tori Amos she's like one of my right. favorite right. musicians yeah. and uh, I don't fan girl easily and stuff I think the yeah. last was like Irfan Khan and then these were like my two favorite humans in general you right. know like they're so cool and i got to meet irfan you know before he passed away mm. and i was just i had that same moment of like you're so cool like how yeah. like how how have these particles come together in this amazing <laughs> way you know and i was walking in london with a friend of mine down the i i have a home in london and i was walking down the road i walk every day yeah. and i saw her sitting in the coffee shop behind my house Wow. And I was like, "God, oh, what the hell just happened?" So I walked <laughs> forward and I started like shaking and stuff cuz I was wow. like, this is so surreal. And then I met her. I went over like a proper fan girl and I was like, "I'm so sorry. I don't want to disturb your coffee, but I really love you." And she was so amazing. She was like, nice. "Oh, I'm so glad you came over. I thought you looked like a fairy." And I was like, "Oh." oh. <laughs> <laughs> lost it. Lost it. And then wow. my friends like Oh Shruti is a really a uh, famous actor in India and I was like no I'm a musician <laughs> It was a moment I'll never forget yeah wow. Wow. and so much more special cuz she was just so warm and wonderful yeah another yeah. aspect to sorry another yeah. aspect to Shruti Hasan is of course fashion and makeup and she's really interested in all of that I know that she has like a plethora of makeup and everything yes. तुम्हारे पास इतने जूते क्यों हैं पहले ये बता दो मतलब क्या कंपटीशन है नो नो इट्स जस्ट हैपन बट आई जस्ट आई एम अ होर्डर बेसिकली मी टू ओह माय गॉड यस यस आई नीड 12 स्टेप प्रोग्राम फॉर होर्डिंग नाउ दिस होल दिस यू नो एवरीवन नोस दैट यू गॉट दिस रियल इंटरेस्ट इन गॉथ वेयर वेयर दैट्स द लुक्स ओर वेदर इट्स द क्लोथ्स ओर वेदर um इज दैट I mean is that something you truly believe in or is it because you you know you follow bands or you follow uh, certain artists who are that way I think it started when I was very young mm-hmm. like I my crush was Edgar Allan Poe which kind of just right. you know I was like he was alive I date him you know yeah. so <laughs> yeah that I think that sets the tone for the rest of my so, life but were you the one were you the one in chennai where all the cousins would run away because you'd be scaring them wearing goth makeup and saying i pay 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 no fortunately my cousins because my dad is such a late child 
yeah. all my cousins were much older much than older. me. Right. Yeah. My nieces and nephews were my age. And yeah. so I think we were okay in that. And also my, look at my mom and dad. How can I be scarier at age eight? Not possible. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I feel it started with music and graphic novels and literature. Like I love Kafka and Edgar Allan Poe. I love death metal, heavy metal. You know, nice. you know, I loved um, iconic characters like the Crow and Death from the Sandman oh, series. Yeah, nice. So everything they were all in that space, and yeah. I also felt what they celebrated was darkness and uniqueness. And you know, I I love people who aren't afraid of their gray area, mm-hmm. and I love people who play in the shadows as well. So it's just really just that. Mm. One of the moments which I remember, which was something which I'll never ever forget, is when I ended up playing Pull Me Under by Dream Theater. And oh I, my god! And I really, honestly, when I ended up finally playing that song because the song is so complex. It's so went, complex, especially on the drums. Correct. So when I finally finished that, like you know, I broke down and I cried, and it was like wow. one of those moments where. So yeah, when you were talking about goth and when you're talking about death metal and all of that, all of that, so those memories. I haven't played in seven plus years, Shruti. I haven't. That's played, bad. Like, zero on ten for you. Yeah, yeah zero on ten. So I'm going to my room now. Yeah, you go <laughs> stand in the corner there, face the wall. Yeah. But your father, I mean. Whatever one says, says about him yeah. is 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 not enough. Your mother extremely talented. So, um, did you feel maybe a little overwhelmed while growing up in terms of the fact that here there are two iconic figures? Mm. I mean, when you open the kitchen door, that is Mr. Kamal Hassan who is standing there. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. <laughs> Well, you know, when you're a kid, you don't realize the meaning of this. Like, I remember really important. That's what director. I wanted to get into. Yeah, yeah, I didn't, I didn't understand. But a really director, important director, came home and he's like, "Where is Daddy?" I was like, "He's doing potty." So, like, I didn't know. <laughs> 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 you know? <laughs> oh, that's too cute. News yeah. flash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. My dad was just like, "Thanks a lot." Like, you know, <laughs> I was just the worst. So I didn't know who they met. I thought they had cool jobs, you know, and I was right. like, my parents are cool. But I did understand when I was very young that they got a lot of attention. Yes, so I was like, yeah. I want my own attention. And I do think as I grew up, this alternative uh, choices in my music and in, in right. my literature and my dressing yes. is somewhere definitely psychologically triggered by how can I be different? I don't want to be like them either. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. it was sure. always like, you know, like silly questions when I was a kid, like, what does your daddy eat for breakfast? I'm like, I don't know, what does your dad eat for breakfast? <laughs> so I was just like, yeah. and I used to like have a fake name because I was just like, I don't want to be Shruti Hassan at age 10 answering these questions that are not about me. So yeah. I think it just yeah. became yeah, an it extension. It can be bugging as well, right? I mean, when you're growing up, it can be a little bugging as well. Not That's when the good. physics teacher gave me extra grace marks. Yeah, I, I, I totally was like, Listen, Dad, I think my physics teacher really likes you. Can yeah. you come over to school? And then he was like, Hello, Usha. And then I was like, oh, yeah, showed that up out of nowhere. 100 out of 100. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Another aspect of Shruti is cooking. Yeah, which yeah. is still not call me to a house, which she's promised. I know, I'm her. sorry. Yeah, and though I made you go and you eat can those call Japanese the both of us pancakes, now. Yes, yes. babe, how amazing are those Japanese? No, no, those are some like they're a special I gift. Them, really? Special gift. It is a gift from God. Those yeah. Japanese food. But anyway, oh. food. What's that for you? Is it like therapy? Is it you like to you like to experiment and 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 cook? I like to experiment. I like to feed people. I think that like when you feed people and they're like, oh, that was really good. Yeah. I'm going to sleep now. It's yeah. just such a good feeling, you know. Yeah. And also my love for food. I've always loved food. The The thing about I want to cook was when I was in America and yeah. I didn't know how to cook at all. Like I used to have hot pockets for breakfast and mm. That's mm. the max yeah. I could do. Mm. Yeah. I used to dream of sambar. With you, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I used to dream of sambar in Idlis and I couldn't make it. And I used to order it for $20 from Surya and LA. And I was like, no, I need to learn to cook when I go back. That's literally where it started. It my now. love for sambar. It's like the yeah. necessity of the entire aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. You, and I was like, how, is... how silly is this that I can't cook? And my roommate, I don't know if you know Jay Rao could be the drummer, you must yeah, know him. Yeah. So he was my flatmate. And oh, nice. he used to like have this big walk and make Chinese food and never really share. And I was like, well, if you <laughs> can cook, so can I. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's one thing uh, that you haven't tried yet, Shruti, that you, you'd love to do? Be a mom, I guess. 
Mm-hmm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. yeah. Um, nice. And- But I mean, moving forward in terms of you being like, you know, you're doing live shows and stuff like that. You're going to be doing that as a musician. How important do you think is it as a musician to carry on with that entire aspect and create your own legacy in terms of doing live stuff? Do you think that that tends to always have more mileage? I don't think, uh, I mean, live is live. It's unbeatable. Correct. Like yes. we live for that, right? Yes. But I love the process of creating the music, collaborating, working in the studio. I absolutely love because it's a different energy to live. You know, there's precision. And uh, I think live is more about persistence and studio work is more about precision. And it's just sure. fun in different ways. But I hope I started picking up my music really late in life, you know, mm-hmm. and it's, it's also we see that seepage of ageism come into music as well even in india which was actually never there never before. the case yeah yeah you know so i'm like i really just want to do this for me and those who want to listen i'm so happy that you do and for those who don't it's fine i'm doing this for me that's how i look at my music and i hope to continue singing and making music uh, as long as i that's can that's the best way to make music to be honest is there, yeah is there anything that you're going to be releasing uh, soon uh, shruti yes I am going to be releasing uh, an album something. or single or just singles. I mean, even I don't have the attention span for. You remember those days where we used to like listen, have album listen. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. No social media. You had like a book and you'd listen to like Dream Theater. Beautiful, day, beautiful, day, beautiful day, days, man. Yesterday, beautiful days. Day before yesterday, me and my husband, we actually sat with our old CDs and we nice. started playing CDs in the night. That's a know, good thing just, to do, yeah, man. It was amazing. To be honest, yeah. amazing. You so know, good. I, yeah. yeah. And my and my daughter comes in and says, "Oh, that's so vintage." Oh, <laughs> it is. It you is, know? isn't I'm it? I'm like, "Oh my God!" A fourteen-year-old is telling me that my CDs are vintage, man. No, but yeah. I mean, it's true. They are only oh, vintage, yeah. yeah, Suchi. <laughs> <laughs> They are true, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, what else is coming up for you, Shruti? Um, uh, that you're really excited about? I mean, anything which is like out of the ordinary, or out of some. rather something that you've not tried yet which you you've uh, been given an opportunity to work I'm working on. on a book actually and right. it's going to be my writing and not an autobiography like you know because yeah <laughs> first of all I can't say half the things and then <laughs> I'm old enough I think yeah. but it's a exploration into my writing which will be coming out soon which I'm super stoked about more music and of course at the, at the same time i'm doing you know a big film like salar which i'm super yes. excited about yes. yeah. you know and uh, it's nice to be a part of a project that's so anti- like whatever you say you can act cool and all but when you're in a cool big film it feels yeah. really yeah, it is. yeah it yeah. is yeah. just a little bit about your role in that one uh, shruti and salar so in salar basically i've, I've been a huge fan of the director you know, prashant neel and kgf was just to me like this creation of this world you know you step mm, yeah. in it and he like draws you in it's not about agreeing with everything in the film but there's no denying how much he takes you away from your now into there you know and i yeah. love that ability and having an emotional thread through because we've seen mad max and all and then they try to say dekho ye pregnant ladki feel bad feel bad and you don't really feel bad you know so it's like <laughs> if you can balance like yeah. scale with emotion i think it's amazing I've always loved Prabhas wanted to work with him so when it kind of came together I was so excited then of course I came across the role and I get to try different things with this character that yeah. I haven't before and what tends to happen is when you play stronger women and have something to say it was really interesting to play a character that was very reticent mm-hmm. like she's opposite mm-hmm. of me she's got strength she's so strong she's opinionated she's very unique to that situation but she's so that is like she has no need to shove it in your face and i was like i don't even know what that feels like <laughs> you know so it was really exciting to play something so completely i didn't even think he'd offer me the part so i was really really excited nice wow. you're an award winning musician uh, shruti you've done fabulously well uh but before uh hey, speaking of awards before we go sorry no i was not going to say that as a, as a as a musician and as an actor would you choose the grammy over the oscar or vice versa given to you you know what i choose a paycheck and the audience any day ah, any day so un- no but i was actually going to get into <laughs> this aspect of you do a lot of stuff which is independent stuff which is let's say singles or albums or whatever when you compose for 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 cinema yeah What's that like as a process? Because that would be not as much fun. At no, all. really, no, really. <laughs> no. Yeah. Not yeah, yeah, I thought 
I thought I from storytelling, storytelling no, no, point of view. Yeah, I did one film and I really enjoyed it. First of all, it takes time out that is very hard to maintain acting with. Yeah, mm. I can still maintain these two, like this kind sure. of music and sure. my acting. That's the truth mm-hmm. of it. So it would be it would be unwise for me to try and do that. Maybe in the future, but music composition for films is a full time job. Sure. There's no right. way to adjust stuff, and it's not right. It doesn't honor the vision of. the film and everything but i also found it uh, a less fun i guess because unlike playback singing where you go for one session you're right. in that mindset of ha ne bataiye kya chahiye how do i do this okay i'll do it again yeah. with films it's a long long process of changes and corrections and you're like oh, <laughs> yeah. the end it's <laughs> like, like i at least was like fine just change it you know and i was like oh, i don't want to be like this you know but maybe if it was my full time job it would be fine You yeah, know. fair enough. Yeah, Akshar, Akshar, your sister. Now, I worked with her sister in one project. I worked with her also. Yeah. Yeah, well done. Congratulations. Next is the yeah. dad and mom. Yes, yeah. Huh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um, Akshar, when it came to her actually deciding that she wanted to do uh, films, etc., <laughs> how much of it has been, uh, you know, have you been a, a part of that process? Nothing at all, really. Yeah. Um, she was an AD. She was a really. it was really great and a proud moment for me because i'd go on sets and my you know people i'm working with would be like your sister no sister was an assistant on that set and she was such an amazing assistant and as we know being a good ad is a very rare quality mm-hmm. yes. So, yes. You know, yes so i i just thought she'd really get into direction or i didn't know but i always thought i was like you're so cute you should act right yeah. because just her face is so yeah. nice to look yeah. at you know and yeah. so expressive yeah, yeah. yeah so it came like completely left to feel for all of us mm-hmm. and um but it was such an amazing launch vehicle with balki sir and you know mm-hmm. someone she felt so comfortable with and such an amazing unique cast and story and mm-hmm. like really a dream debut unlike my so right. i was like you know <laughs> i was like this is awesome and is this what you want to do and she was like i really really want to do this and i was like moving forward every person isn't going to be like balki sir everyone isn't going to be yes. like but oh, yeah. like there's you know the path is like not as rosy mostly the thorns of the rose you know are you you know are you ready for that mentally and she's like yeah i've got it and she's been she's been amazing in the sense that she really has her own meter and her own uh, understanding of this world and she has her own timelines and her way of working mm-hmm. and for me i honor her journey in the way that my parents honored mine which is they didn't get into it they didn't yeah. over advise it's you know make your mistakes have your own successes so that's the kind of thing i i like to have with her as well excellent it's now nice. you and your dad and your sister and all very close yeah one has mm-hmm. seen that what is it that the three of you do to unwind when you all are together i think we like listen to music we talk about like nonsensical stuff that's beautiful now for that someone who's beautiful. been through so much uh, shruti as you said you know your hiatus you took uh, a break etc what is it that you'd like to tell the you know the young uh, your young fans or the people who are looking yeah it would be you know, nice for you to this industry you know what what would you like to tell them the girls or the guys who you know might go through the same stuff as you i mean i don't i don't like advice i don't like those words because you know i don't know what works for you Yeah, but sure. what worked for me always, and it's something that I had when I was younger, and I always say this: mm. we all have a voice, right? Mm. And it's not a voice that you have to scream from the rooftops. It's a, it's an inner voice of what's good for you and what you like and what you don't, and uh, that voice even guides you in the vision of what you want to be. Yes. And as we grow older, there's more voices and there's more yeah. ideas. Mm-hmm. It starts eroding the voice and starts turning the volume down slower and slower, and. suddenly like if what happened to me happens that voice comes back and says please listen to me yeah. you know i would just say don't wait till you get there like always honor that voice and always give it compassion and say yeah i'm going to hear you out because you are me and i think just to constantly listen to that i think that will guide you as a person as a professional in a relationship and the voice isn't always comfortable because you know the voice may be like dumb hit but like you know <laughs> <laughs> but it's about honoring that voice and then applying it to your world but like if you have that connection with that inner voice you'll be pretty okay i think that's just beautifully Absolutely. put across that's just so beautifully put across we're not going to let you go without you singing something ah uh, little <laughs> human jukebox because nobody has ever asked you in an interview so you were not going to leave you to perform a monologue from yes. 
<laughs> no, no, no. They've asked me to sing and all, and I've done. Come on now, Shruti. Come on. Yes. Okay. Um, no, actually, what do you want to listen to? Honestly, it starts of you. Uh, you sing. I'll play oh, the drums. Oh, what was that beautiful, beautiful <laughs> song of yours? Remember, I went completely ballistic because you had put the one on the, the piano. Um, sing anything of yours. Anything. Okay, I'll sing "Wash Me Away," which okay. was on the piano. I think that's the one you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah, and that was about my journey through sobriety, and so I'll sing the chorus from that. Okay, mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. <clears throat> wash me away to a day none of this matters, and wash me away. I can change. I'd never go back again. There you go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Goosebumps. Yeah. Man. Goosebumps. Like, our team here is also Everyone is like applauding. <laughs> they brought out pom poms. <laughs> oh, the oh, other people. <laughs> thank Sorry. You. Yeah, that also happened. Uh, we, <laughs> we were all excited. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. No, no. Seriously. No, thank you so much, Shruti. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for. for no, me. thank you for having me. I'm so glad I could do this. Thank and you. Being on here, right here. Okay. And big, big, God big speed thank you. So much. God speed. Here, here, with Sudhi and Suchi. It's so nice, na Suchi, speaking with her. I mean, uh, such an and honest voice, person. Yeah. Her voice, yeah. Her voice. My yeah. God, you know, seriously. Really looking Gets forward me. to the album that she was talking yeah. about. That she's going to be yeah. releasing. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah. a single yeah. or whatever is the case. It'll be fun. Shruti. Yeah, we talked about bestseller, and uh, you know, you are definitely a bestseller with us. Absolutely. And it's time again to talk about Lal Singh Chadda. Ah, there we go, Lal Singh yes. Chadda. I mean, Lal Singh Chadda is, you know, going to be in the news for a long, long time to come uh, because uh, it's it's one of those movies. Well, Forrest Gump, right? It's, it's, uh, it's that those... type of uh, it's that type of film. Um, you know, if uh, I have to tell you the truth, uh, and uh, which means there's going to be a lot of people in the movie uh, because of the various various stories that are covered in it. One big story is the fact that this would have been after 35 years the uh, you know the movie where we would have seen SRK and Amir Khan and Salman Khan all together on screen. If that would have happened. If, if that would have happened, yes. it would have been. I said yes. But would have one, been means yes. if that would have happened. Sorry, okay, I was just so, so enamored by Lal Singh Chadha. <laughs> yes. Huh? Hmm. Lal Singh Chatta, that's why I'm wearing red t-shirt. Well so done. nevertheless, that would have happened in case, uh, you know, in case Salman Khan had decided that he could somehow have shot for this. Unfortunate, right? The, apparently the dates did not align and Ahmed was constantly trying to yeah, get it did, done but yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, yeah, you know, uh, I'm sure I mean, there must have been genuine problems which is why he, why he didn't do it. But Shah Rukh had already shot for it in hmm. 2020. What's really cute is the fact that Shah Rukh of course has uh, shot in his, you know, Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jai nice. Ke And Salman was to do his Maine Pyaar Kiya, Prem Wala Avtar. Nice, yeah, that nice. would have been so cute, man. Amazing. Of course, how they look uh, at uh, their various ages now doing Kabutar Jaya type of uh, songs, we don't know. But nevertheless, um, uh, it would have been fantastic uh, to see. Who knows, maybe Salman will give Amir permission to do some CG or something like that. It won't be the same, no? Suchi. It just uh, won't have that sort of an impact. Yep. But anyway, we're still looking forward to Lal Singh Chanda. Come what may. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry? Are you <laughs> trying? <laughs> Sorry, again? That's what you were going to tell me about, right? No. <laughs> no. Okay. No. <laughs> run. Yes. Well, uh, you know, saying that reminds us of who? Dad. You're scared of me? Yeah, you are not scared of me. No, what we're talking about is the movie Dad. The movie Dad where Shah Rukh Khan, um, you know, of course, just broke onto that screen and was just like phenomenal in that role. And everyone said, Tell me, Suchi, at that time, probably he was the first uh, uh, actor to actually come out uh, with an anti-hero. Anti-hero, yes. Right? And that worked well for him. Uh, you know, Yash Chopra, but there's an interesting story here, Suri, because Yash Chopra apparently, uh, you know, he chose him for, uh, you know, after right. after watching him in, in, in 4G, where he plays this arrogant young mm, lad, mm. you know. And uh, there were apparently some problems during the making of Dar because Yash Chopra actually thought that Shah Rukh was arrogant in oh. real life. Okay, and even though he had chosen him, he had started looking for a replacement because uh, uh, he felt that uh, Shah Rukh was displaying certain characteristics of maybe that 4G type of character, you know, that arrogant lad. So he had like a lot of do's and don'ts on the set. Apparently and, so, yeah. you know, may have had some sort of diva like uh, behavior. Maybe. We don't really know the details, but Yash Chopra was thinking twice, you know, about it and said, no, maybe I should change him. Which is when Shah Rukh sat Yash Chopra down and said, no, 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 please. Uh, you know, I want to do this and they obviously, you know, ironed out their differences and ever since then, of course, we are not only Yash Chopra, but Yash Chopra's son, Aditya Chopra also, you know, for his first three releases, he had only, um, you know, Shah Rukh in them and uh, Yash Chopra, of course, after that, 
that was his blue eyed green eyed all eyed boy interestingly <laughs> suchi subhash ghai also had uh, the same sort of uh, uh, mindset for shahrukh khan yeah. and uh, this was during three murti Oh, correct, correct, right. Correct, so correct. the he felt that Shahrukh was again arrogant or whatever is the mm. case, but it's very unlikely. It man. is very unlikely. That's why yeah. I'm really trying to wonder what must he have. Very happen. surprising. Maybe he was just in the character, character that he was playing. Character, exactly. Yeah. Boji, he didn't snap out of it. That's yeah. all it was, yar. But I've snapped out of it. So long, farewell. Avida, say goodbye. I hate to go and leave this pretty side. Actually, I can leave this side, which is in front of me. That's Sudhi very easily. You oh, see, because oh, this is my goodbye. Was, I always love it when you sing that song. Yeah, it's yeah. so nice. No, it's so nice to see you dancing here also in the studio. Yeah, But always. sadly, I will sing some other song. And for now, it is Sayonara, goodbye. Sayonara, sayonara. Stop, Sudhi. Okay, okay, okay. And that's with Anya to all of you because it is time for Sudhi and Sudhi to leave you. I love you and leave you, but we. We'll be back. We will be back very soon. Here, it's here with Sudhi and Suchi.